Welcome to this week's episode of Telegraph Herald More Than the Score, presented by Dubuque Auto Plaza and Dubuque Bank and Trust. I'm Telegraph Herald Sports Editor Jim Leitner, and this is sports reporter Tim O'Neill. Uh, we'll jump right into it. Uh, obviously, fans are probably wondering where Steve Ortman is. Tim, can you kind of give us a little insight where, where Steve might be this week? Well, as some of you may know, he is a big Patriots fan. He was talking to me about a plan. He had to go help Tom Brady get ready for the AFC Championship game. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Uh, just one bit of advice, Steve, if Tom asks you to deflate those footballs, don't do it. I do. He did mention some, something about going to the sporting goods store to picking up a couple of those needles. So I don't know. We'll have to keep an eye on Steve and make sure that he passes through security uh, properly when he gets out there. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about wrestling with Tim O'Neill this week. Uh, Tim, uh, it seems like there have been a ton of milestones happening here in the last week or so uh, with local and area wrestling programs. Shed a little light on on the milestones that we've seen over the last week or so. Well, just recently uh, for Dubuque Hempstead, a couple of wrestlers have won their 100th career matches. Uh, Alex Ward did it first a, a couple of weeks ago, and, and then Dylan Gottschalk did it on Saturday. They became the 25th and 26th Dubuque wrestlers to reach 100 wins. Uh, both guys are only juniors. They got a chance to continue moving up that chart. Uh, the city wins record and program win record is 168 by Gannon Gremmel. Since both of those guys are juniors, they do have a chance to catch that. Uh, they need to do a, a lot of winning uh, yet this season and next year to, to get there. But it's definitely within reach uh, as they continue uh, doing what they've been doing the past couple of years. And as we look at Western Dubuque, uh, Max Lyon became their all-time winningest wrestler out there, earning his 166, 166th excuse me, career victory to pass Jim Gatto, who had 165. Uh, going into Thursday night, Max Lyon has 168 wins and only eight losses in his high school career. Uh, just an outstanding wrestler. And not the only one who's done it at Western Dubuque this season. Braden Burt has also won his 100th match. And entering Thursday night, Aaron Costello is at 99 career wins. So both of those programs will have 300 win wrestlers this season. Uh, I failed to mention Nate, Nate Feldman did it earlier this year for Hempstead. And as we stay with Western Dubuque, uh, coach Paul Cleary won his 150th dual win. He's only in his sixth season as coach, so 25 dual wins per year on average. That's pretty solid. And, and as a result, the senior class earned its 100th dual victory as well on Thursday night. Uh, just a, a bunch of milestones falling quickly, and, and obviously more to come as the season progresses as we get closer to the state tournament. Tell me a little bit about that 100 win mark. I know that uh, it, it seems like now wrestlers get a lot more matches than they did 15 or 20 years ago. Uh, you know, I know it was a lot harder to get into that 100 win club, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, even 20 years ago. Uh, what, how big of a, or how significant is it for a wrestler to get to that 100 win mark and, and how special is it to, to reach that mark? You know, I think it kind of depends on the wrestler. There are some wrestlers who maybe don't start out as freshmen or sophomores or, or maybe start late in that period. And for them to get to 100 wins, it's still quite an accomplishment. But like you mentioned, they're wrestling quite a few matches this year. Uh, just last year, Max Lyon went 51-0. and 0. So he's halfway to 100 right there in one season. Uh, for a lot of these guys who are wrestling all four years, 150 is really the new benchmark that they're shooting for. Um, and, and Lyon and Gannon Gremmel for last year for Hempstead have been the only guys uh, that we've had reach 150 wins in the last few years other than uh, Jim Gatto and Nick Steger out at Western Dubuque. Um, so really that kind of is the plateau guys are going for. It's still obviously nice to get that, mm -hmm. that round number, get to the triple digits, but it, it doesn't quite have the prestige it used to have. And, and, and some of the guys have been saying that as I talk to them for these mm -hmm. stories that, you know, 100 is nice, but it's not really the ultimate goal. We're getting to that point in the season. We're probably about a month, a little more than a month away from uh, going to the, down to Wells Fargo for the state wrestling tournament. Uh, it it kind of feels like right now that things are starting to ramp up a little bit on the wrestling scene, that guys are getting a little bit more excited. Uh, they're figuring out where they're going to wrestle, what weight, um, you know, who they're going to have to face in the postseason. You know, tell me, how, how are things kind of ramping up right now with you know, really a month left to go to really fine-tune your game before you go to state? Well, really, uh, this weekend down in Clinton, it's the, the Bob Luters Invitational, and that is a very prestigious tournament in eastern Iowa. It's got a lot of the top teams. 
Uh, Western Butte coach Paul Cleary calls it a mini state tournament because of some of the, the, the strong teams and traditional powers that they have there. So that comes a week before the conference tournament. So that really is a good chance to look at where you're at, how you stack up, and use that as uh, something to build on going into those conference tournaments. Find out what you got to work on, where you're weak and where you're strong, and, and use those to, your, to the best of your ability as you go past the conference tournament and get into the sectional and district meets where you know a loss really could derail your season. You know, as I mentioned, you were about a month away. Who do you see right now as as potential guys that can get down to Des Moines and do some damage and maybe make it onto the podium a month from now? I put your uh, crystal ball out there. What to, who do you think? Do you, who do you see as you know, little legitimate podium contenders this year? Well, let's start with the guys who are ranked number one in our area. Uh, Max Lyon and Aaron Costello, both from Western Dubuque, are both ranked number one. Lyon at 182 and Costello at 285 in Class 3A. Uh, we also have another number one ranked guy that we really haven't talked about much at all is Luke Hageman from Dyersville Beckman. Obviously he has a chance to not just to get down to state and get on the podium, but uh, favored to, to win it based on his ranking this late in the season. Uh, as we look at other guys, uh, Western Dubuque has a very strong team, a bunch of ranked guys. Braden Burt at 132, Luke Kleesner at 195. Uh, and then I'm even leaving out some other guys who are probably going to get down to state and have a chance to get on the podium. Uh, at Hempstead, it's Dylan Godchalk and Alex Ward and Nathan Feldman, Dylan Olson. All of those guys are ranked. Wallert's got some really strong wrestlers. Uh, and Dylan Olson, or uh, excuse me, uh, Blake Bradley, and Drew Lenz, and Boone McDermott, uh, and Colton Bartow. Seniors got a chance to send some guys down, get some place winners. I think uh, I think this winner could be the best winner we've had at the Iowa State Wrestling Tournament in, in my seven years covering the sport. Yeah, you know, I, I used to cover wrestling several years ago, and it'd be you know it'd be maybe one or two guys with a chance to make it to the podium uh, from our area. Uh, what's the reason? Why are we seeing so much uh, of a resurgence here? Resurgence of you know area wrestling. Why are we seeing so many good, strong uh, programs and guys that have a chance to make such a damage down there? I think it's just a, an improved focus on the sport. Um, you know, as as some of these sports have seen some strong wrestlers go through it. They've inspired some younger kids. Those kids have grown up wanting to emulate that on the mat and a bunch of guys just buy in. You know, a lot of times it takes the right coach to get everybody to buy into the right way. Um, and, and sometimes it's just luck. You get really strong classes. Um, a lot goes into it, but uh, just really fortunate for this area to be going through the kind of resurgence that it's gone through because uh, the, the sport of wrestling used to be really strong in this area. It had that little downturn, and now hopefully we're back to, to this point where, you know, Dubuque wrestling's back on the map. I know this is probably your most exciting time of the whole school year. Uh, tell me about how much are you looking forward to this next month, month and a half, when, uh, you know, things really start to get interesting. Yeah, I've made no secret that I've fallen in love with the sport since I've started covering it. It's just... Um, I'm looking forward to, to the thrills and the chills down at the state tournament. Mm -hmm. I mean, as, as guys are <coughs> fighting to keep their dreams alive to win a state championship, other guys trying to, um, you know, just reach goals of, of, of getting on the medal podium. You know, the chance to see these guys achieve their dream, uh, make history in some cases. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a, a thrill to watch Bellevue come back to, to the state tournament after a long absence and, and follow that path. And some of these guys from these other schools um, it's just really fulfilling to see them get their hand raised at the end, all the hard work they've had, and and to know that you know it could all go away in one mistake. So you got to really be perfect to to get it done. I know that uh, you know when I, when I grew up, I didn't have any kind of wrestling background. I know you're the same. You didn't wrestle in high school, um, but it's a very interesting sport to watch. And I think of all the state tournaments, it's probably probably the one that's most interesting in terms of people watching, uh, going down there and watching people from all over the state, uh, a grandmother from Emmitsburg or, you know, basically all over the state, they go nuts for the sport. Tell me a little bit about the environment there and how it's so much different from any other sport in terms of, you know, the energy that's in that building and, you know, and people watching and seeing, uh, you know, people from all of the state, all over the state really enjoying the sport. You know, obviously I can't speak to every state tournament. I haven't covered every sports state tournament, but I, I, I'd be hard pressed to find one that would match the excitement and energy of the Iowa State Tournament. When you think about the fact that you got people from 200 different high schools filling an arena. 
you'll never see the arena full for a high school state basketball championship, I don't think, or, or the Unidome will never fill up for a prep football state championship. But Wells Fargo Arena will fill up to the rafters, and these fans will all be cheering on their different high schools, and they're all very educated. They know about all these different wrestlers. Who's number one? Who's a two-time state champion? I, I remember there was one year uh, an early tournament match between a couple of three-time state champions. They were both trying to get, go for the fourth time, and everybody in the arena was fixated on this one match. It was like a, a state quarterfinal. It wasn't even on the, the, the final day of the tournament or anything like that. And Everybody was just so into the match that I don't know that you'd be able to find that in any other state tournament. It's just awesome. Yeah, it's like I said, without having a, a big back, background in wrestling, it's a, it's a very fun sport to watch, and it's it's addicting. And like I said, it's a great uh, great event to people watch. And I think if you're from Iowa, it should be on your bucket list to at least go down to one state wrestling tournament. Uh, that should pretty much do it for Telegraph Herald More Than the Score, presented by Dubuque Auto Plaza and Dubuque Bank and Trust. Thank you, and we'll see you next week.